there, just making sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So this next gentleman, boy, he, he has done a lot. <clears throat> he has done a lot. I don't know where to start. All right, so gynecologist, let's start there. Okay. Poet, comedian, let's, let's continue there. Social commentator, um, wow, human rights advocate, on stage, off stage, no matter where he is, he gets your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Dr. Michael Abrahams. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Respect, respect. We're <laughs> still stuck in the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, any parents in the audience? Let me hear from all the parents. Make some noise. Parents, make some noise. Yeah. Long story short, me not breed nobody again. Ever. Allow me to explain. I am, I am the proud father of three beautiful children. My eldest is my daughter, Aaliyah. My second is my older son, Zachary. And my third is my younger son, Zane. And this is all about Zane. Zane is the reason why I want to have a vasectomy. <laughs> why am I want for time of chobes? And this is because on paper, Zane is one child. But in a real life, he was about 1100 pick me. In other words, the boy haunted. Bad. Zane is more haunted than a graveyard in St. Thomas. <laughs> Zane is so haunted that everybody who walks past my house knows that little boy's name because every 10 seconds somebody calls it out. Zane, don't go over there. Zane, move from there. Zane, don't touch that. Zane, put that down. Zane, why you broke it? Zane, what a bumblebee is wrong with you? That boy will provoke it to wrath. And yes, I have a lisp. <laughs> so now you have an idea of the type of individual we are dealing with. So anyway, one day I went to school to pick up my son. And I love to pick up my kids from school. Because when you pick up your kids from school, you get story. You get the lowdown on what is happening in the school and all the kids in the class and who rude who give trouble, who get into trouble. And of course, your child never gives trouble. <laughs> your child is always an innocent bystander. <laughs> so I pull up to the school, I park in the parking lot, and I collect my son and his accoutrements. Which brings me to another point. Back in the day when I used to go to prep school, we used to go to school with a school bag and a lunch pan. Children nowadays travel to school with luggage. Them carry suitcase and them carry all kind of bag and pants. So I collected my son with his luggage and transport them to the car and start to pack away everything in the back seat. So I put my son in the car seat because he was only three years old at the time. I put the luggage, the suitcase, pull something on the seat beside him. And then I put the lunch bag beside him. And then there's the issue of the igloo. I don't know why, but igloos always leak. I don't know why. On this particular day, there was a lot of water in the igloo, and I decided I, I didn't want it spilling in the car, so I was going to just discard it. But I'm one of those save the planet kind of guys. I, I, I can't waste the water. So I decided I was going to pour the water on some plants along the side of the parking lot. So after I finished watering the plants and I'm making my way back to the car, all of a sudden, I heard the, the ominous sound of, of screeching tires. 
and a woman's blood curdling scream. Ah! Oh my God! So instinctively now, I, 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 I turn and I start to walk towards the drama. And I'm thinking to myself, blow all. Look like somebody licked down a youth in a Mona Prep parking lot. Thank God my child is safely in his car. See it, oh my God! Let me look. No seeing that. Catch up under the man car. His left leg tucked between the front right tire and the asphalt. Let me tell you, I went numb. My face went white. I saw death. <laughs> Not his death, he'd be okay, but mine, because when my wife find out that this happened under my watch, <laughs> we'll say we dead. Long story short, nobody never dead. There were no serious injuries, there were no fractures, he just had a, a, a nasty, fresh wound. So the doctor who saw him, the orthopedic surgeon, was advising me you know, how, to, how to treat the wound. And he asked me if I knew how to protect it when I bathed my son. I said, I don't know, you use a, a scandal bag, saran wrap, I don't know what you do. And he said to me, you use a condom. And I said, you're damn right. <laughs> if I did use one three years ago, I wouldn't be in this mess. And he said, no, use the condom to cover the leg. You put it on and you roll it up like stocking. Made sense. <laughs> so my son was wearing condoms at age three. I never expect that. <laughs> I mean, I know he's a little prick, but I didn't expect him to be using it that soon. Not only was my son wearing condoms at age three, but he was wearing extra large condoms. And they fit him snugly. And that affected my self-confidence because I have never worn an extra large condom in my life. The only way I could wear an extra large condom snugly is if I put it on my head like a shower cap. So anyway, I was there feeling demoralized, looking at him comfortably wearing the condom. And I was like, yeah, look at you. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Luckily, there was something in it for me. Because my son, being unemployed, he never have no money for buying no condom. So it was my job. To buy the condoms. That made me look damn good. So I had to go on that job with great pleasure. Walk into the pharmacy, walk confidently up to the cashier and said, standing erect, give me a dozen of those extra large condoms, please. And I'd walk out to the pharmacy with those condoms in my hand like a trophy, like I want a Grammy. And my son used to bathe, you know, at least twice a day, so the condom then finished quick. So in a few days' time, I'd be back at the pharmacy again. Give me more of those extra large condoms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, eventually, my son's leg healed. He's now 10 years old. He's no longer wearing condoms, but I am. And I'm taking no chance because, long story short, me not breed nobody again. Ever. Thank you.